Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to another fantastic episode of Last Minute Kickout. I am always Pete Times Quid Nevico, joined by the cohorts in podcasting crime. One, Mr. Kevin, the Kevin Eva Eva. Hello. One, Mr. John Turbo Finley. Welcome to hell. In a cell. 2019, as we talk about it. It happened about a bit of a bit of a week and a bit ago, but uh, we are busy, busy individuals. And this is a part-time gig, so we talk about these things when we can, and as such, we're talking about it today. There was How also there was also a bit of a desire for us to sort of gesticulate, not gesticulate, but you know what I mean. Just 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 sort of just need to ruminate on what happened. I think, I think yeah, reflect. I think this 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 one specifically required a lot of time to pass before we could really say about it yeah we have to we had to go all but all of us, us had to go into our spiritual journeys to actually find yeah. out <laughs> oh, we were hard to go and talk to a coyote and but... uh find our path to this indeed so uh we are going to be talking about hell in a cell 2019 quick thoughts before we dive into the matches john what did you think overall of the show what did you think? It was for, it was okay for the first hour. I thought. And then yeah. my mind went to black after that first hour. Mr. Kev. When you only have four matches announced for a pay-per-view hours before the pay-per-view starts it doesn't bode well generally not no i don't think any of us actually had any kind of like <laughs> feelings that this would be a good pay-per-view if uh, just based on how haphazard it was set up happy hap happy hap 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 yes we shall start with uh, the only pre-show match, I believe, Natalia versus Lacey Evans. Yes, it was the only pre-show match. By God, did it not need to be here? Although, it's like it's just like every other interaction that they had uh, prior to their last interaction, which was their uh, because obviously we recorded this like weeks afterwards as the fact. Uh, off their uh, last woman standing match that was finally the blow off but uh, yeah um, I'm sorry why do you keep having uh, this well, at the time I don't know why this feud was keeping going and it was just boring like it was just not a fun match and Natalia can get a good match out of a you know, out of some people, but I like to as think much of this. As she tries. She I like to think of this well. match as custody of the sharpshooter because they they just seem to have been doing it backwards and forwards. <laughs> well, that's well, that's what I was saying. They, they yeah. set, yeah, they set, they set, they kind of semi setty up as that without saying anything. Um, because it was only the, the commentators that made it uh, sound like it. It was, the case. It was trying to get trying to get some investment in it from people and. Yeah, because well, we because we were having a good, good joke about that on the predictions about oh, custody of the sharpshooter. Yeah, you know that that move which isn't actually Brett's by his own admission because yeah. <laughs> the scorpion was first. So uh, it was it was a match. It was a match. It was it was definitely a match. There was two people in it. There was a decision. Which, and I was right in that decision. Yeah, you were indeed. <laughs> When it was an initially announced, uh, basically all the this was one one of uh, the other, what was it, four, uh, three or four matches oh, that was announced for the card, uh, like an hour before the show went live. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. So uh, yeah, me and Kev, we did our predictions in the in the uh, yeah. in our chat Discord, and uh, I chose for Natalia to go over, and uh, wouldn't you know it, I was right yep. because they needed to have her get a win back from uh, Lacey. Um, you know it. He was right. Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans continuing to, uh, continuing her descent down the card at a rapid pace. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a brought it's, up it's, too soon. Yeah, it's not. It's not a simple slide. It's basically free fall downwards, like straight. It's simple panic. Um, it was okay. Ten minutes of nothing, but it's pre-show. And but we've, we've had bear and pre-show with the cruise. Matches. Yeah, but all the cruiserweight stuff's been moved to NXT now, so you'll never see it as a pre-show, and therefore you'll never see a good match on the pre-show again. Good. I can enjoy takeovers more. <laughs> I Until mean, it's on the pre-show I mean, for Jaco. The the, 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 <laughs> Us, the the Usos need to do something. <laughs> put them back in their back. Yet. Put them back in their position. I don't think they were even drafted. No, they're no, not they drafted. Weren't. They're neither is Naomi, obviously, for her reasons. Reason. Anyway, we'll move on to the first match of the main card, which was Becky Lynch defeating Sasha Banks. In hell in a cell for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. I get the feeling that people really enjoyed this match. It had one notable spot, and that was it. No, I, I, you know, I popped for several of the spots that happened during this match. There was, there was some creativity. There was some um, taking from New Day Usos. Mm-hmm. Some, some cribbing from their card um, the elevated chair spot I thought was quite nice mm-hmm. I, I, so did I it did feel as though at least from my point of view I mean it was like, really like 22 minutes give, you know, as, as near as makes no difference I struggled to remember much in that match. It was it, it, again. This is sort of a, it was a hell in the cell that just sort of happened. They started outside the cage, didn't they? Because yes, yeah, because Becky went. Oh, actually, no. Uh, Sasha jumped Becky. Becky knocked her out of the cage. Was like, aha! The, the cage isn't going to from there. Yeah. They just did the vaguest of teases of just like bringing the cell down on top of somebody, which would be, you yeah. know, death. Um, but you know, otherwise it was it was a Becky Lynch match. It was. Uh, yeah. Although I'll definitely say this much, and it's like uh, I do recall that uh, Sasha Banks was using her Miura way too much in the match. But I isn't that isn't that isn't like... that every match of hers now though? It's just like Meteora well, off of this, Meteora off of that. Well. I didn't Tell notice it in your, previous uh... matches, but in, in this Hell in the Cell match, I've noticed that, yeah, she did, like, three uh, in this match, and the most notable one was the one through the table, and that's why Be- uh, it was more notable for the fact that Becky Lynch had to jump. Yeah, yeah, she didn't jump into the meat. Get meteor. herself <laughs> over into the table. To be, uh, to be able to go, because otherwise she was just going to go into the edge, and that would have been kind yeah, of Yeah, that would have hurt. Mm. But no, I mean, uh, t- the the kendo sticks in the corner with the chair on top and whatnot yeah that was a notable spot uh even the chair that was like embedded into the into the cage that would be used later uh i thought was good yeah that was, uh, that was a good use of that the table spot even though i just pointed out that little thing i thought that was a nice nice spot for that mm. um uh and then uh what was it uh uh, Sasha Branks bringing out her uh, inner ECW and it's like uh, you know putting in all the chairs so like, stop throwing in the chairs <laughs> well which which what we, they, they were trying to recreate that spot um that we had with Lesnar and Ambrose yeah where it was just because we now don't want to show Ambrose doing that so they, they as always when somebody goes and they don't want to use the footage anymore they recreate the spot that's about right yeah uh-huh. uh, Pete was there anything that stood, stood out for you apart from the apart from the ludicrous red cage as they continued now to it use it was just it was just the chair in the corner that was the most notable spot of the evening for me it was, um, it was fun to watch mm. I, otherwise it was standard fare um I'm just really disappointed for the for the point. I, I was really hoping Sasha would take it because I think Becky's really just had the belt for too long, and Sasha coming back, you know, and showing that she could be a dominant champion has just led to 
um, you know, her not getting the title because the brand split was uh, the fucking what's it called? Draft. Draft. Yeah. Draft was coming. Becky Lynch is obviously the face of the fucking WWE 2K20, so she's now not going to drop the belt forever yeah. anymore. And See AJ Styles and, and what we were saying last year about AJ. Yeah. yeah. And um, it it just means that Becky continues just walking over everyone. And I liked heel Becky. Face Becky is boring. Fa- face man. Face, that's because face Becky. That's because face Becky is heel Becky. <laughs> No, yeah, but she's not. She doesn't do anything healy. She just walks up with an attitude. Well, she she's is... pro. She's proto Stone Cold. Yeah, no, I get that. I get what they're doing, but I'm just saying it's, it's... not. It's not it... entertaining. I can understand there's, there's how you're some... not finding it. There, 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 there is there is something about it that fundamentally doesn't work. The pro- the problem the problem with Becky stems from the fact that she went heel, she got over. They did this whole Survivor Series thing, and they they got worried, so they had to pull her from the uh, from the Rousey thing. So they pushed Charlotte to go heel to get the same effect. Charlotte got over from going heel against Ronda, and then we had two both Becky and Charlotte fighting each other as two mega heels, and so Becky just kind of went tweener, and no. Charlotte Charlotte stayed Charlotte. Yes, she did. Uh, Becky that, went tweener. That... That's not how I kind of like recalled how the crowd reacted to how they tried to turn Becky heel. Um, and the crowd weren't having crowd, any of it. The crowd wasn't having any of it. Yes. And they were basically... Because they were trying they were, they were trying to ins- what, they were insisting. They were insisting that Charlotte was face. Let, 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 me, let, me, let, let, me, let me rewind you back, yeah? Becky lost it. Like Becky wasn't over with the fans at all until she lost it and went ham on Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Everybody loved it. We loved it. And then Charlotte was always kind of meh. And then when they pulled Becky because she got punched by Nia Jax and Charlotte went ham on Ronda, fucking the crowd popped for Charlotte going ham on Ronda. Yeah, because because as, was... as we mentioned, it was the exact same match that they were going to do with Becky. They just literally put Charlotte in that face. Yeah, because yeah. the only reason why they cheered that was because they were booing Ronda Rousey. And they wanted to see someone just beat up Ronda Rousey with a, with yes, uh, but they they it. pushed Charlotte to be a heel because of it, and then you had Charlotte versus Becky because the whole fucking wow SmackDown what's a year with SmackDown and Raw come together to face off has over, and then they just went to back to Becky and Charlotte, and they just had to fucking lose out with one of them, and so Becky eventually got the title because she was still mega over, and then casually drifted into this tweener phase, and it's fucking boring. So, so the, with the ending of this match, you had you had uh, Becky winning via submission. Yep. Yep. And so, and, and cracking ba- Sasha's back somehow. Yeah, as well. Sasha, Sasha getting hurt. So not only she's she's come back, she's been tapped out, and now she's hurt again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that that hasn't helped anything. <laughs> no. This match. This match has. This is the pay per view of this hasn't helped anything. <laughs> With the exception of one match, it hasn't helped anybody. Hmm. Oh. But yes, first your yep. first turn in the cell. I thought um, I th- well, I thought yeah. the match was fine. Uh, I, I'm I'm guessing you guys just didn't like it at all, so or didn't care it, for it. So it was there was nothing expressly wrong with it. It doesn't necessarily mean it I felt it was good yeah I'd say that's about right it, it was very generic Hell in a Cell it's almost El Generico's Hell in a Cell if only if, if only, fucking yeah. only that would be way brain <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so uh, from one meh match to another Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns against Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. Now again, you're saying this is a man match. I thought it was actually because the wrong for... fucking team. Okay, won. yes, yeah, except for the ending. Yes, I understand. All right, you you what? Of course, we wanted to have Luke Harper and Eric Rowan to go over on this to make them credible heels and whatnot. Yeah, I know that. 
I know, but I'm just looking at the match itself, the work rate of the competitors in the match. And for from a work rate kind of like performance, I thought it was a bloody good match. The ending, the finish, understandably made it poor. So I could understand your frustration. But other than that, the match itself was fine. The match was energetic. The match had proper kind of like, you know, kind of like... Uh, tag kind of like and it was a tornado tag as well which even was even better yes and the tornado tag match is the only good change to this match because otherwise it would have been fucking boring yeah so but other than that i can understand your frustration but you don't have to go rag on the whole bloody match saying that oh this is shit because of the ending it's like you know remember john three different tiers of how we look at the product here casual viewer Someone that looks into everything. I look at it. It did not keep my entertainment. It was boring as hell. The only reason it was of any caliber whatsoever is because they took it away from being a normal tag match. I agree with both of you. You can't. I can. Watch me. Uh, I agree that uh, in terms of the work rate... It was in, it was enjoyable from the fact that you got to see the guys, and it was that tornado element that really actually unlocked this. You got to see the guys do their thing, you know, properly. It was good from a character point from Rowan because Rowan was kind of calling the shots, and Rowan got to look like uh, a badass, mm -hmm. and he got to look like a credible threat. So naturally, by the end of the match, he didn't um, <laughs> because of. <laughs> it was all going so well. It, you, 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 could, you could buy into Rowan and Harper being a legitimate threat to Roman Reigns, which is something of an achievement. Of course, then we get to the... Again, there we get to the end of the match, and oh, whoops, status quo. Uh, I wasn't sure what... Brian brought much to the match actually of, of all of all the four I thought Brian brought the least well which he did, surprised uh, me I think he at one point there was a moment in the match where Brian was about to be power bombed into the announce table but he was able to reverse that into Harper Rana and then yeah. Roman Reigns came out to spear I think it was Harper yeah because it was it was the, yeah, it was the over the tables bit yeah I uh, and I thought that. Oh was yeah, good. and then Roman's that. Oh, the edge, the 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 side of the table popped up and hit Roman in the leg in a really nasty fashion. Mm. And that 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 was a bit worrying. Yeah. Um, but he was there for the. It was, he was all, there for the finish because he was able to get a knee in there. It I was believe. all right. We got we got some good tag team stuff. We got a little bit of a heart back to some of the old gimmick um, Roman and Harper stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, Reigns and Brian make a very interesting tag team I think purely based on well it was not just size but styles um, yeah because it was conflicting styles is it could, yeah because and, and this is one of those situations where the conflicting styles really do gel well I thought mm -hmm. um, and I'd be interested to see if they actually did some more stuff going forward if 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 hey creators got nothing for them just just have them face off some other people for the time being <clears throat> but end of but end of the day we've got a situation where well that's the end of that chapter we've we've successfully defeated <laughs> rowan and harper and it was nice to see you again harper now get back to wherever it was in limbo you were because yeah. they because they, they, they've not been drafted one of them has uh, yeah, Rowan's, yeah. Rowan's been drafted and Harper hasn't because Harper's yeah. back in contractual limbo again. We, mm. They basically got Harper out of mothballs. Gave him, off not, get him out of mothballs. I, and, I uh, did not know he was back in contractual limbo. No, that's well, that's the reason he's not been drafted. Fuck's sake. Because he's, because he's still not happy. Uh, WWE threatened to fine him over something because was, there was a whole thing in his, his like Twitter description about his DMs being open. Um, uh, and he, he swore... Well, well, he, 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 swore, he censored himself. He says he's just put an effing or f f. <laughs> and uh, WWE that's threatened that's to fine him for that, and it was just like, wait, but all the people at NXT on, on on social media are swearing all the time. Like, what the hell's up with that? Oh, I see. It's a nice, interesting double standard you're doing here. So fine. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, so he's back in the he's back in the doghouse after coming out of the doghouse, putting on a couple of excellent performances, naturally enough, because he's fucking hot, Luke Harper. And yeah. That so that is now over with and And the the turn that we thought was gonna happen with Daniel Bryan. We kinda of thought it was gonna happen. happen. Yeah, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. He's 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 full face again. Yeah. Like a, f- a face got, turned by he, convenience. So so much so much a face, they asked for a hug. At the yes. end of the match, didn't it was need crazy. that. <laughs> I didn't need that. Just like that was way too much. It's, it's it's such a weird it's such a weird turn from Brian as well. Just just in general, because yeah. the reason he turned face was because he wasn't as evil as as Rowan was. Yeah, and he. I didn't like... try and kill you, therefore I am. I am well, not. Well, that, and he's also. He's like, I don't like liars, and thus, you know, Rowan was lying to Brian, and it's like, well, nah, I don't like you now because you lied to Rowan. me. Then. Yeah, I'm a bad guy with morals yeah. and a strong moral compass, and yeah, end of the match. Nobody's really helped by it. No. They were they were they were that close to making uh, Rowan a very legitimate threat going forward that they could utilize as in like a mid card heel, mm. and so naturally they failed. Moving along, singles match, and this this is this is a great example of how to give somebody the rub whilst then whilst the whilst they still lose. Yeah, Randy Orton versus Ali. This was built up on the, I believe it was either the pre-show or an interview. It was the that pre-show. Was, yeah. yeah. Just a random interview. Just had where Ali challenged Orton. Because mm-hmm. Orton just came into the thing and uh, while Ali was talking about Kofi Kingston, who lost the WWE cha- Championship by this time, uh, he was saying, talking about, you know how he was a good champion and whatnot and uh, how he was proud that he replaced him and whatnot and then randy orton comes in and say hey guess who replaced uh replaced you in that uh elimination chamber match it was me you know so <laughs> and and thus thus men have fight um randy orton appeared randy orton was dick <laughs> randy, orton, randy orton match happened Randy, uh, Randy Orton appears. Randy Orton uses dick. It's super effective. A shiny Randy Orton. A shiny Orton. Shiny Orton. <laughs> do, do you have for us, perchance shopkeeper, a shiny Randy Orton? <laughs> Look, it glows as it slivers. <laughs> RK uh, glow from out of nowhere. RK glow. <laughs> oh, oh God. That that that's the next that's the next uh, bloody uh, mix max challenge uh, combination there. Yeah, Naomi, Naomi, and Naomi and Rawlton. RK Glow, bloody. Oh, hell. some would have come but up. But WWE, if you do that, we want royalties for that. Yeah, absolutely. Please. <sighs> but yeah, so this was a again tw- so twelve minute match. This felt really good from my point of view. Yeah, it made uh, Ali look. Great, and of course, the noble spot from this match was Ali countering the RKO in a magnificent counter yeah. of being able to just get into a handstand position and just pop block, right back. Yeah, up. block the down, block the downward descent. Manages to then use the momentum, flip himself back up. Yeah, and Aut- Orton shocked. Everyone's yeah. shocked. Everyone, the co- comment, the commentary are going nuts because it's not something they've seen before, and uh, yeah. they're giving him lots of props for you know, scout properly scouting it. I always yeah. like it when I always like it when commentary say, "Hey, they've done it," just indicating that you know it's something such a movie scouted. They've done their homework. They've done research into whatever it was, and they've come up with creative ways. It's it's a good way of putting over the skill of an individual without them actually doing necessarily doing anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was good. And then Ali came close with it with a, with a, with a crucifix, uh, crucifix pin uh, attempt. Goes for the the rollout again into a pretty sweet RKO, mm-hmm. uh, and then we had the moment afterwards after that happened where sort of Orton's being a cocky bastard like he always is, but yeah. it, it was but it was sort of like a, sort of like ah got you, 
did the pin in sort of re- relatively lazy fashion because well, have, you seen, have you ever seen Orton not be lazy? Let's be honest. <laughs> well, <laughs> did, well, he was a determined quite lazy. Orton cover. Has, is there such a thing as a determined Orton cover? I mean, come on, he he always does blooming headlocks and whatnot. He's always mm. like the amount another of headlocks. Headlock Randy, another headlock. <laughs> Yeah, you know. uh, but but yeah. Afterwards, we had a. Um, we always seem to end up mentioning this on on this show, but we again we had the sort of the almost like uh, take a Hardy situation in that the, the heel gave props to the face. Mm. There's like a like a tap of the tap of the shoulder, a little wag of the finger, um, as like yeah, you know, you might just have something here, kid. Yeah, you know, that, that was that was good. So we'll see what what happens. What do you think about match, Pete? I thought it was all right. I I really wasn't paying that much attention to it, to be honest, because I uh, I paid attention to the reversal because it was just made note of. But Orton was there, and therefore I just did. <laughs> Orton does have this. Orton does. Orton actually do have this thing of just like putting this sort of like fog across the screen. Mm. it's like reality maybe, has suddenly become a lot put, grayer yeah i was gonna say maybe maybe we should uh add in some uh you know some emergency sirens as he's coming mm. out no what we give him is we give him some uh, some black light face paint on and we can give him some uh give him a funky glowing title we can marry him off to an uso and <laughs> <laughs> You can just have him replace Naomi. That's it. That's it. That's, it. That's, it. That's, it. That's what we'll do now. Get Naomi. To every, do every, t- every time Orton comes out, he has. Every time he comes out halfway through it, it turns into Naomi's like, Naomi's intro, and he has to go with it. Just make him go with it. Make him be entertaining in that fashion. He'd probably be uh, fine with it, to be honest. Yeah. Well, probably. he could do that massive air, uh, like leg split. Oh, air, the stupid. Like, yeah, yeah, the stupid. <laughs> yeah. The only, yeah, the, only pull, the only the only the one he only pulls out when his character's super super excited for some goddamn reason. Yeah. The the weird vertical uh, legs, horizontal leg split. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Anywho. Anyway. Let's go to the next match. Uh, kind of. Uh, and the and match. the and the the belts that the time forgot. Otherwise, known as the WWE Women's Tag Team Titles. Yeah, Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane versus Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I enjoyed this match for what it was, especially the ending. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. Uh, I was I was obviously I was thinking when this was announced and whatnot. Even though I like uh, Nikki Cross and whatnot. I felt as though that because the Kabuki Warriors have been like done in so many times out of the t- titles and they've been needing the titles, I felt they needed to get the win. I didn't know that they were going to be heels to do it, mm. but I'm glad that they did become heels to do it. Um, especially Asuka, um, you know, bringing back uh, you know the mist, the green mist uh, for the finish. Um, a great throwback, something that uh, you know well, was Japanese, quite Japanese Japanese star staple for when they heal is yeah. you know, the mist. It yeah, has led into uh, some new facial paint for Asuka. Well, gra- granted, that was already uh, that was a part of her mask. Yeah, change up her but she it was never kind of it really didn't mean anything. But now it means something, and it, <coughs> it and it, it reflects on her uh, face paint uh, as well. So. When, yeah. when this weird situation where it was it was effectively a double turn effectively yeah and what was it? it was with it recently now the fact that even though both of them were on uh raw they just recently got put back onto smackdown nikki cross and uh thing i don't know where the kabuki warriors are though i think i think because they're champions they're going back and forth yeah, uh, so I think it's, I'm I sure. Think so, cause the women's I'm sure team. they'll try to, you know, continue a storyline between those two teams, and uh, maybe there might be a little dissension between Nikki Cross and Alexa down the line um, uh, while they're trying to fight to get the titles back. But um, who knows? Uh, but no, the match itself decent. 
Uh, well, didn't really have too much problems with it, but no, yeah, I thought it was a good match. Yeah, it was enjoyable. Definitely, definitely, definitely enjoyable to watch, and I just love the ending, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, the next match, uh, the Viking Raiders uh, with the mystery partner of Braun Strowman, which is fair enough because I thought it was going to be Cedric Alexander again, to be mm -hmm. fair. Uh, versus the OC, another match that was made on the fly. On the fly, was this announced on? This was part uh, of the announcement this... that was an hour before the show. Yeah, <laughs> on Twitter. Like, oh, by the way, here's what's coming up tonight. Yeah. So a uh... six-man tag match, and further deeper into the recesses of darkness go the OC after you get a cool new theme song and some brilliant artwork. At least they haven't split them up uh, again like they did uh, in previous drafts. Yeah, at least they're still. I, th together I think as if, the if, they'd, if they'd have done that, I think they'd have lost them. Yeah, they'd have lost Gallows and Anderson. Yeah, yeah. they would have been like, "We're done." That's it. Because yeah. <laughs> they that always happened every time. It was like when they were with Balor, the draft came, they got split up. Yeah. When uh, actually no, it was uh, when it was them and AJ, they got split up. When it was them and Finn, for a brief period, they got split up. It's like now they're actually together, which is good. But of course, you had the new tag. Uh, you, you have the new tag team, the newest tag team at the time. Um, you know, with uh, the Viking Raiders, and they had Braun Strowman. They needed to make him strong again and whatnot. Uh, and granted, I'll give it to AJ. Bumps like a bloody boss. Yeah, I'm surprised he's still able to do what he does these yeah. days, to be fair. At that age, definitely. And he's come, you know, soon to be retiring. Um, yep. after lost this, lost uh, contract. Yeah, so. Um, but yeah, give the man kudos. I mean, granted, he's got, you know, the US title, and he's, at the moment, he's not really doing much with it. But give the man credit. He can He can work. He can still work. And he worked well on this match. Yeah, Kevin, any further I have thoughts? absolutely nothing to say about this match. It, well, it happened. Again, it's another one that it happened. Yeah. It, I, just I, it, it, it lost me. It... it lost me so early on this match. Yeah. In terms of what was going on. I knew exactly what the result was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Hot, big host team. Yeah. As, as, as soon as you heard, as soon as you heard, like, bruh. <laughs> on the theme tune, like, oh, okay, well, <sighs> okay, it's gonna well, be this, me... is it? Fine. We'll the the after on... the aftermath was fun. The aftermath was funny. Oh yeah. We'll we'll move onwards to the next match of uh, the artist formerly known as Chad Gable, now L Shorty Gable, um, <sighs> versus King Corbin. This match let me down, basically off the off only off the part where I thought that the final match they had for King of the Ring was fucking amazing. And yes, just, I agree with yeah, that. Very, very good match. And I was expecting something of the same caliber, and it didn't touch anywhere near this. No. They were just not... In, they just didn't have uh, the chemistry for that... Uh, for this... for this rematch or whatever. Uh... uh the, the, just... the stakes or lack thereof, I think, played a factor here. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as like was like it wasn't like desperation stakes. It was no. it was it was I mean, just it was... a general normal match, and it yeah, suffered. Yeah, right. and it was it, it was still like Gable trying to one up uh, Corbin to say, okay, I can actually beat you, but only on the fact uh, only on the case that when there's nothing to fight for except for just pride, you know. Uh, and even then, it doesn't bloody matter because guess what happened before the match actually started? They started to, you know, Corbin decrees that Chad Gable is to be now known as Shorty Gable. And by God, I am not happy with that because now he is officially just called Shorty Gable. And that annoys the piss out of me. Because Gable, on his own, with his name, with Chad Gable, can could get himself over. 
he didn't need a name change. And definitely not to that degree of calling him Shorty. The the effort to make we don't need any encouragement to think Corbin's an asshole. Yeah. This is, we, we know he is. We know he's a tosspot. We know he's going to be an absolute jerk. Yeah. He was, any- that's basically been his character since he got brought up to the main roster. He's yeah. an asshole. I don't think any other previous King of the Ring winner was like, I decree this kind of like bullshit, you know? Hey, hey, hey ch- ch- have him have the power to like change around matches and shit. Fair enough. Yeah, that that's that sounds. Or, like, or, and all or that play... does, all that really did that was go, was just make me go. Well, this is something that somebody at the back, high up, has got some yucks about. We should call him Shorty Game. I, I don't know why I'm doing that particular voice. <laughs> It could be anybody. We should call him Shorty Gable because he's kind of small. Ha ha ha. It's good shit, pal. <laughs> but it, it's just one of those things like, okay, this is, this is for the, the enjoyment of people in upper management and this is, this is all that is. And yeah. It's just like, it's just a great example of just getting their yucks out of something to the detriment of a wrestler to the detriment of a match and the product that they're, and the, the program that they're apparently <sighs> going with and all it does is just advertises to the wrestling audience that hey you know what you always you know what you always thought about behind the scenes management guess what you were right can't say anything more than that Pete, yo, your thoughts? I mean, what sort of thoughts do you want? I, I pretty much said it. Just didn't live up to my expectation. Like after the King of the Ring finale, I was really hoping for this, but it's it just let me down on so many levels. I, 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 plus, and the whole plus is just, and the whole, plus and it's the just whole continuing. Case, it just it just goes on. It goes on. I, I don't care about the name. No, fair enough. He's, he's Chad Gable, you know. He's Chad Gable. He's he's Charles Betts. He's whatever you want to call him. A name a name doesn't mean anything except it's there to you know piss anybody off. All right, let's move on to a match which I think that you guys might want to talk about. <laughs> Charles oh. Flair versus Bailey for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship. Oh, I haven't got any papers on my desk to throw up in the air. <laughs> I think we kind of knew what was going to happen here. Yeah. After after it was pretty much pointed out on commentary, and it's like, well, she's got her ninth. She's on ring. nine. <laughs> she's on nine. <laughs> Just reminding well, she you, she's a nine time nine. champion. She's well away from getting ten. Fuck me, honestly. I. D- <laughs> Charlotte Flair turned up and wrestled a Charlotte Flair match. Yes. Did a shit moonsault, as she always does. Bailey got to look fucking weak as anything. Yep. Charlotte Flair won, got a 10th title that nobody wanted to see. And Bailey. Apart from her and Andrade. <laughs> That's it. Uh, and a fair play to them. For the for what happened after them after this match going into TV and that it has actually been used as the the final the final straw the tipping point at last in switching Bailey, Bailey to a, yeah. a new actual heel identity. <laughs> yeah. Um, and make all the kids cry. All now. making all the kids cry. I bet she felt absolutely horrid about that. And then somebody actually pointed out, no, this is wonderful. This is exactly, yeah, what, exactly what we want with the character. Um, yeah. It's... And of course, so Charlotte won't win the title, gets the 10, loses it immediately. Yeah. Because Charlotte Flair. And... Oh, fucking hell. 
just, just how 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 <laughs> how fast will it be for her to get to her dad's record? I, I guess, don't the next care. Year. We know it's gonna happen. It's gonna be in the next within the next year. Two years. Two years. What for her to get 16? sixteen? Two years. Yeah. Or do you mean seventeen? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yes, of course, because they <laughs> yeah they fucked that up. On they the fucked... that one week. They, they were counting one of the changeovers in Japan, but they're not they're not sure they're not sure which one. Yeah, they're not sure which so. one it is. Oh god, see, it's a fucking awful match. Charlotte, as always, just any kind of exertion just just uh, falls apart. Everything about her, just <laughs> any kind of exertion, she goes she goes purple, and then the, the hair comes into this sort of raggedy mess. Yeah. And she just looks like she's been beaten or winning. She just looks like she's been beaten. Yeah. But uh, achieved achieved nothing. Nobody wanted it, and yeah. it's it's just it's just propping up her numbers. Because mm-hmm. didn't you know she's the greatest WWE 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 Women's Champion of the modern era? She's a hundred and seven times a champion didn't you know i'd love to know the commu- the cumulative days of her last five reigns oh, i would love it's... to know that we, we know there was the big long reign right at the beginning but the last five of that in terms of days if it's more than about 30 i'll be astounded it's about it's a uh, over 30 i'll tell you that much but it's definitely no more than 100 uh, i'm gonna start looking it up um, shit, was this her combined women's championship length? Yes. Just, uh, the, just like, the, last the last five. five the last five reigns in terms of... One dates. of the last fives is pretty long, though. Uh, Charlotte But Flair. yeah, while, while, while Kev looks this up, I'm sure we can end the show on it. Yeah. Because it'll be better than what we're about to talk about. <laughs> Steph Rollins. <laughs> versus uh, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. <laughs> Where Seth Rollins went out to burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna uh, let you two go off on one. Enjoy. No, no. WWE I want to hear from you first on this one. I want to hear from you first on this yeah, one because I was it's more too predictable. I, what we're gonna be like? I, I was more intrigued to see how it was gonna end at one point. Like, of course, we were all intrigued to find out how they were going to end this. Did you guys hear what the original ending for this match was apparently going to be? Yes. Mm-hmm. But for for the people who don't know, just tell them. So the apparent the apparently original ending for this was going to be, um, uh, Bray Wyatt doing a uh, mankind a, a mankind uh, style falling off the cage, and then it be referee stoppage. Yeah. And then he would get back up and do the mandible claw like the original match did. Um, but I would like to point out that both Shane McMahon, twice, yep, and Mankind, plus any other bastard that Rikishi and every anybody else that's fallen off the show has not had a referee stoppage in a Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Um, and plus the last time we had a Hell in a Cell main event, it was also like at the pay view was also referee stoppage as well so if this is going to be a thing that's going forward i'm uh, kill me now. yeah um but that ending would probably still have been better than what did happen and oh my god kill me now look into my eyes what do you see the worst ending to a wwe ppv <sighs> And I thusly, I hand the stage to you. So. After you, John. WWE. You done fucked up. Plain and simple. That's all I have to say on that. Because... You're done. Fucked it up. Oh, he's not wrong. Uh, he's not wrong because it's one of these things that, from the absolute get go, you knew they'd book themselves into a corner. Yes. Because you can't have Rollins lose. No. 
and you can't have have the fiend lose no by that same token you can't have the fiend win and you can't have rollins win and the rules of what you've done prevent that from happening i think i think we can all say that if you're not willing to book uh, a match with a consistent ending and you, where you don't want either superstar to lose don't book the fucking match yep. it's it's something we've and this is something you say a lot Pete, but it's, it's something we all say again and again and again if it doesn't benefit what's gonna it doesn't benefit the talent don't do the match in the damn first place yeah and whatever happened here it was gonna hurt somebody and oh, it hurt they, Rollins. yeah and I, I i i actually until the very end that part before the very end i actually really enjoyed yeah i, I liked agree. the whole thing about i mean i didn't like the bajillion stomps i didn't like yeah, the, oh, I, oh, oh I, yeah, I do. Oh, I do, I'm it. just gonna bury him stuff. I don't know. I know, but the the idea of Rollins being on this knife edge about like, like does he cross this line of, you know, because ultimately it's just it was sort of portrayed as okay. The only way you can stop him is by killing him. You know, him being <sighs> in that anguish was interesting to me, in terms of what way he was gonna go. It wasn't something that was probably very um, obvious about this, to the thinking, audience though thinking about this more and listening to what you're saying Kev it almost feels like when Rollins has been doing the triple stomps against Lesnar and Braun and digging out the pedigree it's all been leading to this because mm. he's essentially been showing that he can put Lesnar away with three stomps it takes multiple stomps and a pedigree and everything else to put Strowman away and yet, against the fiend, it does nothing. Yeah, it does, it does not. The, 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 the first instance of okay, the stomp, and it's just like it gets one, if that. That was like you know, whoa, oh, hang on a minute. Mm-hmm. And then it went a bit. Then it went to much like Rollins's character, it went too far. Um, and of course, the other thing with that, the other thing with that is we, we take. Oh, I guess it takes free stomps for this game it also means it's like everybody that's not those guys makes everybody else look really doesn't make them look strong it makes everyone else look weak in comparison it doesn't it doesn't it works in the reverse what you had with this was like a situation where whatever happened somebody was going to look bad and they managed to find the one route where everybody looked bad even the ref managed to look bad as a result of this match nobody was happy one of the things that we actually said in the predictions john i don't know if you remember was that we kind of uh, i think we both kind of agreed that there was a very high chance of everybody in the crowd being really unhappy at the yeah. end that was actually one of the things we said like whatever happens it everyone's going to be unhappy and we reckon the crowd wasn't going to be happy unhappy rather but not to this degree Mm -hmm. everybody's come out and said their piece since wrestlers have come out and towed the company line uh on social media in terms of oh well people should be grateful for what people was on their live live stream saying that uh how the hell do you get uh, do that's, this finish and that's the, the yeah cell. that's the counters like yeah it doesn't make any sense it's, it's, yeah not only is damaged the match it's managed to damage the match yeah the gimmick itself they've damaged mm-hmm. so uh, again so nothing has is benefited enough nothing uh, the, only, sorry, the, play, the, the the one entity that has come out of this much better is actually aew because it's the it's the hey they got lots of nice chance when all that was going down oh yeah but it's again an example much like the what i was saying about shorty gable it's another example of wwe just like falling down under its own weight in terms of in terms of these things 
And it's an example to the people watching that they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. <sighs> Can't put it any better than that. I, I have a feeling what I know what the answer to the next question is going to be. But, Mr. Kev, did you find out Charlotte Charlotte Flair's reign numbers for the last five um, championships? I had a page a second ago. Was, bear with me. Because uh, it's, it's the SmackDown ones. If I do champion for that show. So, um... Yeah, but they classify her as a, right. wo- as a women's champion rather than just SmackDown. Yeah, but, it's the, uh, but, but Wikipedia's got this is split, unfortunately. So, her first SmackDown reign was 147 days. Uh-huh. That's in November... That, that's from November 2017. Second uh-huh. reign, we're talking... Again, this is just for SmackDown. Uh, was August 19th, 2018. That lasted 28 days. Uh, the third reign was began in March this year. One on a one on a SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Connecticut, Oscar. I remember last, that. Uh, reign three lasted for 13 days. May 19th, Money in the Bank lasted less than a day. Because you got cashed in. And Helen in a Cell, um, of course, is the most recent capture. Lasted a whole five days. So, of the last three, it's been five less than one and 13. And the one before that was 28. Oh, well, well at least we can be sure that Charlotte Flair didn't get one first in the WWE. Mm-hmm. She did not get the first women's Grand Slam. Right. Um... Before we wrap up the show tonight, guys, uh, as usual, your ratings, Mr. Kevin. Ooh. All right. Based on what I just said about damaging the gimmick, when that gimmick is also the pay-per-view, you done goofed bad. It's going to be probably my lowest ever a four. Purely because of the just amount of damage that they've managed to do to... You've you've not killed the golden goose, but you've beaten the shit out of it. Harsh, but that's that's my reasoning. No, that's fair. Uh, John? And I would have to agree with that score and give... A four as well from my end. No! Oh! Um, I think we need to be done away with Helena Cell as a pay-per-view name and bring it back as a fucking blood feud ender. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking The Fiend versus Seth going straight to Helena Cell did not need to be a thing. No. no. Um, I, however, am going to disagree with you and I'm not going to score it a four. I'm going to score it a two. Really? <laughs> wow. Fair Legit- enough. Legitimate dog shit from beginning to end. The matches yeah. the matches had no build. The the results had no consequence because they were building for the draft. Matches that should have been good based on prior results were dog shit and had a better better showing on free TV, if you want to put it that way for the American stuff. It's mm. legitimately horrible. The only reason, the only reason it's not a one is because of the finish for the women's tag match. That's it. It would get a one otherwise. This is the lowest This is scoring. without doubt the worst pay per view we have ever <laughs> reviewed on well, LMK. In terms of score, I think it is, isn't it? I, I, I want you to say so far because we shall be returning soon. With Crown Jewel 20. Oh, God. Uh, it, and, and, <laughs> let, and let's be clear, because they were clear in the advertising, it's a pay per view. Now, it's not a network special, it is a pay per view. They were very clear about that. In fact, it literally says underneath the fucking logo, pay per view. <laughs> 
Terminus will rip his own skin off. If you're, if you're listening to the, if you're listening to the, if you're listening to this on the, the podcast version, Terminus literally like rip the skin off of his skull. Man. <laughs> it just, it's horror. So I I, um, I, I, I want to recreate the uh, graphics from Hell in a Cell. And, the, are, are and what's great though, what's great though is before we even get to, they've already fucked it up because they ha- they went and announced Rollins as the captain for Team Hogan. They've yeah. given him double duty. Uh, is, is he doing yeah. double duty? He's d- yeah, he's got a last man standing match against the Fiend. I, I yep. thought they were going to try and get him out of that. It, it doesn't matter game. because it doesn't matter because Seth's going to win anyway because fucking White's been drafted to SmackDown. Yep. So it's pointless. So yes, they have fucked it up already. We're really glad Saudi Arabia's our friend, and this is a friendship that'll never ever end. You can't, you can't even say that anymore. Because you, you haven't have you have you read what happened on Raw this week? No, I haven't. What's happened? Oh, Seth Rollins went to. Oh no, he's burnt it down. I know he's burnt it down. He managed to find his way into what is essentially a mental construct. So exactly. that, they fucked. Just, they managed to. They've gone from hell, fucking up her herself to fucking up the Firefly Funhouse. They fucked up. It's they some, fucked up the the most. The, the best thing that WWE programming has had. The before. only person that should have even remotely had a chance of actually infiltrating that would have been Taker. Because yeah. it's that kind... Okay. It's, it's, it's a mystical, know, mythical, psychologic thing. I want to know, thing. has Vince slash Heyman decided that because they weren't the creative mastermind behind The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and The Firefly Funhouse that they had to ruin? Well, Heyman's not going to be that. No, Heyman's Heyman, not gonna, would Heyman, Heyman, that. Will, Heyman will embrace that and encourage the crap out of that. I would be it's very happy man. to see it. You know who it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can't you can't say other way because he does have full creative control on fucking Raw now. You know, he only answers to one man. So yeah, I, and that, that one man told him Bruce Pritchard. You don't know. You don't know. Um, <laughs> Let's no, let's say bye bye Bishop as well now. Wonderful. Miss, oh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. John, where can they find you around the internet? Yes, you can find me on the internet uh, through Twitter and Instagram with at TurboXLR. You can also follow, find me on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv forward slash TurboDrive Live, where I'm streaming every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. UK time. Go check it out. Yeah, yeah. I would like the company sometime. You can find me. Uh, on my main account at Titans Creed, you can find my gaming account at Gaming Phoenix. If you don't want to listen to me ramble, you can find uh, me upload videos every now and again over on youtubecom slash Project Phoenix Productions, and you can find me streaming on Twitch five to seven days a week on twitchtv Project Phoenix Productions. Mr. Kevin, where can they find you around the internet? Uh, for gaming stuff, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Twitch.tv. It's Last Minute Continue, or on sorry, on Twitter, it's Last Min Continue. Um, it's there's an Instagram for that, which is also sort of me slash the gaming account for all of us. Um, as a whole for last minute kick out it's at faces in peril on twitter and if you just want to follow me personally it's at the kevin eva thank you very much for watching or listening ladies and gentlemen depending on where you have found us please give us a like give us a review wherever about you are on the internet join us and come and talk to us and everything else give us your thoughts on hell and cell 2019 and be sure to listen out for us soon for Crown Jewel 2019 and then Full Gear as well Full Gear where I will defend that last minute yeah. kick out That's championship that guy against against one of these two it's Turbo it's gotta be me okay that's fine. it's gotta be Turbo everybody thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we'll see you next time bye everybody bye